Good morning students. Today we will have a discussion, a video presentation on chronic tonsillitis and its management. Well, you are already all aware of the fact that tonsils are derived from the second pharyngeal pouch and they also form a part of the Walter's ring. On that note, kindly go and look up the embryology of tonsil as well. Let's take a look at the clinical features with which chronic tonsillitis may present to you. The patient will present with uh, throat pain and the throat pain associated with fever which may be 7 attacks per year or 5 attacks per 2 year or 3 attacks per 3 year. This may also be associated with chronic irritation of the throat, halitosis or what we call bad breath, dysphagia which is there only in the initiation phase of swallowing that is after the oral phase of deglutition, closed voice. These two symptoms, the last two symptoms are mainly because of the enlarged size of the tonsil. Now let us take a look at the clinical examination and its findings. The tonsil will show varying sizes of enlargement depending upon the various types of chronic tonsillitis presentations that we have, which include follicular, parenchymatous or chronic fibrinoid tonsil. Due to chronic inflammation, there may also be hyperemia of the anterior pillars. Irwin Moore sign will also be positive, that is, on applying pressure with a tongue depressor, there will be extrusion of uh, cheesy material from the crypts of tonsil. Presence of significantly enlarged jugulodigastric lymph nodes is also a sign. Significantly enlarged means more than 1.5 cm. Okay, so after seeing the clinical features, let's see how do we manage a case of chronic tonsillitis. We can either manage it medically or surgically. Medical management includes adequate dose of beta-lactam antibiotic for adequate number of days. We can even give adequate hydration to prevent pre-renal failure. We get adequate analgesia for relieving the pain. Now let's see what are the indications of tonsillectomy. We look at absolute indications more than the relative indications. One is hypertrophy, causing obstruction to the airway. Establish chronic tonsillitis, which cannot be resolved by medical management. Tonsillitis resulting in febrile convulsions. Peritonsillar abscess, in which we do interval tonsillectomy. Asymmetric tonsillar enlargement for biopsy. And in case of tonsillar malignancy. Now, before we look at the surgery, we look at the important complications of tonsillitis, some of which are peritonsillar abscess, parapharyngeal abscess, exacerbation of the rheumatic fever, or a carrier state of rheumatic fever. Let's see the surgery of tonsillectomy now. The patient is in rosis position and under general anesthesia. Remember that you are seeing the oropharynx in the inverted position. This is the right tonsil being touched by the instrument. And this is the left tonsil. The uvula is in the center being identified for reference. Now we are looking at the larynx with the endotracheal tube inside. Going to the surgery, the tonsil is being held by the Dennis Brown tense tonsil holding forceps and the incision is being made on the anterior pillar. This method of doing the tonsillectomy is called cold steel method. There are other methods using cautery, laser, coblation, etc. Now the dissection is carried out between the tonsil capsule and the superior constrictor muscle. The fibrous bands are dissected using Mollison tonsillar dissector with pillar retractor. Dissection is carried out from the superior pole all the way down till the inferior pole. After reaching the inferior pole, we are going to use Eve's tonsillar snare.
the tonsil holding forceps is taken out the eaves tonsillar snare is used the snare is used over the tonsil and is used to crush and cut the inferior pole once it is removed the fossa is packed with gauze to give time for hemostasis meanwhile we go to the other side the same procedure is repeated on the left side the complications of tonsillectomy as you can see are the surgical trauma to the surrounding structures the bleeding which can be of various types the primary hemorrhage is what occurs on table reactionary occurs within 24 hours of surgery and secondary hemorrhage after 24 hours onwards here you can see the left tonsil the plane identified and dissected till the inferior pole and the eaves snare being used to crush and cut the tonsil so that completes the surgery now the fossa should be thoroughly inspected for any bleeding points and hemostasis should be achieved patient recovers from general anesthesia